Hey friends! Today we're going to talk about how to fix a table of contents, including how to fix the capitalization and make sure that it's uniform across your table of contents, and also how to edit the numbering beforehand in case you have a book like this where each of your chapters corresponds with a day or a list number and you don't want your introduction to have the number one before it in your table of contents and we'll talk about what to do if you're missing chapters in your table of contents. So let's just start by fixing the missing chapters here. If you can see here, there's an introduction and then it goes to number two, which says, see tomorrow's stars today. If you come down here, chapter one or number one says climb Cahoon Hollow. So it completely skipped that chapter and there are several chapters in this table of contents that were completely skipped over. Now the reason why that happens is because when you create an auto table of contents using Microsoft Word, it pulls from styles and I'll put a link and a little note up here for my video that talks about Microsoft styles and how to use them. But just briefly, if you look up here, it shows the Microsoft styles and if you click on a heading, you'll see what style is currently assigned to that heading. So if you click on introduction, it's assigned to heading one. If you click on climb Cahoon hollow, it's a uh, style one right here. And you can also open up, see I just clicked this little uh, arrow in the right bottom corner of the styles area to pull open the styles box. And I usually create my own styles when I'm formatting a document. This is a document that I'm helping someone else with and they already used styles, assigned styles. But the problem with this is because this has the style heading one assigned to it and this has the style style one assigned to it. When he auto-generated the table of contents, it only pulled the titles that had the style heading one. So it completely skipped over any headings that he had that had the style one assigned to it. So what we're gonna need to do is go through here and make sure that all of our titles have the heading one assignment. Now there's some awkward spacing before some of these, so I'm just gonna delete that to make sure that they're centered. So that's heading one, that's heading one. And you don't even have to highlight it to assign the style. You can literally just click on it because it's gonna automatically assign that heading style or that body style, whatever it is, to that entire section of text. So if you clicked in a paragraph like this, and you clicked heading one, see how it automatically assigns those styles from the style of heading to that entire paragraph. So let's undo that. So we'll just click on each of these and make sure that they're all assigned to heading one. So this one is style one as well. So that one was omitted from the table of contents. So we just say table one or he heading one, and then let's get rid of the spacing here. This one is heading one, but it also has some awkward spacing. And then I'm going to reapply heading one, heading one. A lot of these have some awkward spacing, but I'm not gonna worry about that for all of them for the sake of the video. Heading one, heading one, heading one. And as you can see, I'm just clicking somewhere within that line. And these numbers up here have style one assigned to them, which means that they are not gonna show up in the table of contents as long as you don't tell the table of contents to pull style one headings. And I'll show you how to do that in a second. Heading one, heading one, heading one. Great. Now, as you can see, the in the body text, these titles are in all caps. But when you come to the table of contents itself, Right here, there's the the capitaliz capitalization is kind of all over the place. So the introduction is in all caps. You've got walk through us footsteps is in all caps. It's and then there's some that are capitalized here and here and here, but everything else is lowercase. So it's kind of all over the place. So first thing I'm gonna do to get our missing chapters, since we went ahead and applied the correct heading style to all of our titles, is you click up here on contents and click update table and click update entire table. 
And as you can see, now we have our missing chapters and they are in all caps. And the reason why is because these, when they were typed, were actually typed in all caps. The style that was applied to these makes them automatically all capitalized. capitalized. So if I type, right now I'm just using lowercase letters. See, I'm typing lowercase. I don't have caps lock on or anything. Okay, so you see how it's, it's coming out in capital letters, even though I'm not using caps lock. And that's because the style that was applied to it is a all caps style. And there's a couple ways that we can fix this. I'm gonna show you the slow way and then I'll show you the quick way, okay? So you could, the slow way would be to go through each one of your titles in the document and fix the capitalization. So basically you'd have to retype these. So let's just see what happens when I retype Climb Cahoon Hollow over here. Now, like I said, I didn't use the caps key or anything. I just typed this all in lowercase, okay? Then if we update the table, then see how it's all lowercase now? That's because I typed it in all lowercase letters. So I could go through the entire document and retype everything in all caps or in all lowercase or by um, making the beginnings of the words uppercase, kind of like a title that you would normally create but that is going to take a really long time especially for a book like this where there's a lot going on as you can see so what we can do instead is highlight our table of contents and we'll just edit the text in the table of contents so i'm going to come here and it says change case and i'm going to say uppercase because that matches the titles that are already in the document they're all in uppercase so there you go. See, it looks really neat and tidy now. Now, the other thing I'm gonna need to do, cause as you can see, it's a little bit too big here. And so the formatting is getting messed up a little bit. So I'm gonna re-highlight my table of contents and I'm just gonna take it down a size. Now see, that looks really nice. In fact, I'm gonna take it down another size until we have it on just three pages. And see that looks a lot nicer so we don't have just a little bit of the table con of t contents over on this page and then we'll just get rid of this empty page here voila then because i moved some of the pages over the page numbers are going to be different now so i need to go back and update my table of contents and that'll change the page numbers oh my goodness gracious just undid all my formatting Okay, so update it and then we'll redo the formatting real quick. So take it down a couple sizes and make it all uppercase. Okay, and then if I just say update page numbers only, it should not affect my formatting. Yep, that is very nice. Perfect. So that looks really neat and tidy. And then the other thing I wanted to do with this document is make sure that the numbers because as you can see there's a hundred numbers a hundred chapters a hundred sections for this particular manuscript and it doesn't work super well if introduction is number one because then all the rest of these numbers are not aligned with the correct chapter title so all i have to do is click right before introduction right there and then click backspace and see what that did it just removed the number one from introduction and moved it on to the next title and everything is now lined up. So we've got one through 100, and that's exactly where we need it to be. And that's pretty much it. There's other things that you can do to fix your table of contents. The one last thing I wanted to show you is how to generate a table of contents in the first place. So if you're not at this point yet, you're still looking to generate a table of contents, I'm gonna show you how to do that. So let me just go ahead and delete this table of contents here. There we go, remove table of contents. Okay, I'm going to insert page break. So you can insert a table of contents right here. References, table of contents. And I like to go to custom table of contents so I can take a look at the options that I have. 
and we'll go to options. Now this is what I was talking about, about styles. So with the table of contents that was already generated, it was only pulling the titles that had heading one assigned to it. So we're actually gonna take away heading two and heading three. What this would do is if there were any subheadings, heading twos and heading threes, then they would show up as subheadings in the table of contents. I don't think there are any heading twos or heading threes in this document, but just in case there are, I removed those categories that were just seeing heading one showing up in the table of contents. Then you say, okay. And there's different styles for the table of contents. You can kind of click through these. I don't think any of them really look that great, to be completely honest. That one doesn't look too bad. That looks kind of messy from template. Um, I think this is the one that was already in the document, either that one or this one here. That one actually looks really nice, but we wanted the one that had the numbers at the beginning since this is a numbered manuscript. So we'll just click OK. Now, as you can see, it auto generates our table of contents. And then I just need to go through and make sure that my formatting is correct. Because as you can see, it went back to what it was at before. So we'll go home, take it down a couple sizes and make it all uppercase. And then once again, remove the one from introduction. And there you go. That's what we have. And then sometimes it will automatically add the word contents right here. In this case, it did not. I'm assuming that's because we created our own table of contents, like a custom one. But we could apply heading one to this. The only problem with this is if you apply a heading one style to your table of contents title to the word contents, then the word contents is gonna end up showing up in your table of contents the next time you update it. So you probably don't wanna apply that style. Um, I'm actually not going to apply a style. Oh, it's just applying a TOC1 style. But I'd say like normal or just create your own style. That way it's not gonna be linked to your table of contents. And I will just type the word contents. And maybe line it up with my table of contents. Oops. There we go. So maybe with the words there, that looks pretty nice. And then with the actual table of contents, maybe I'll actually bring everything back. Ah. They always have trouble with this part. It's being slow. See, I didn't like how much it was indented, so I'm just bringing everything back. And we'll bring back contents as well. You get the idea. You can kind of play around with how your table of contents looks. And that's pretty much it. I also wanted to give a shout out to Larry Stanford here for allowing me to use his book to show you guys how to fix and add a table of contents. This is a book that he just created and it should be going up soon on Amazon. When it does, I'll go ahead and include the link in the video or in the description below and then you guys can get your copy as well. This looks like a pretty cool book. The Greater Cape Cod Bucket List, 100 Ways to Have a True Cape Cod Experience by Larry Stanford. And the examples or the different options that he gave here, his titles and in his table of contents sounded pretty cool to me. I would love to have a bucket list like this from my hometown. So just a shout out to Larry and thanks for letting me post the video.